Today we're out sailing, but the key thing we're actually trying to practice today is docking. Because for us, that is the most stressful part of this whole process. And from what we've heard, it's the most stressful for a lot of people. So that got us thinking, if it's this difficult now, what was it like during the Age of Sail? We've already become collectors of docking stories in our first couple of months of sailing. From us getting bumped into, to watching a dramatic bumper car docking accident, and then us having a pretty hard landing on a gusty day the last time we were out. No one seems to be immune to the occasional embarrassing docking experience. Um. All of this made us wonder, how did these huge sailing vessels during the Age of Sail navigate these tricky passages and harbors when all they had were sail power and their own strength? So essentially, ship's captains had a few different ways to get themselves and their ships into harbor. Warping was one of the biggest ways, and it could either be done using a kedge anchor or designated pylons throughout the harbor. Warping was a very innovative way of moving around a port. Basically, large posts along the harbor or in the mud along dredged channels would be used as fixed points that the ship would use to come and go. Using ship's boats, lines would be slung around these pilings and then hauled on by the crew using the ship's capstan, the main winch, which basically multiplied the pulling force of the crew when they hauled on ropes or cables. Thanks, Kira Knightley bringing the ship towards that post. This action being repeated until the ship was safely at their destination. Beep beep, coming through. If a harbor didn't have these posts, a kedge anchor could be used to accomplish the same maneuver. A ship's boat would be launched with this small anchor and at various deliberate intervals drop the anchor, allowing the ship's crew to use the capstan to haul on the line, effectively moving the ship forward. Once over the dropped anchor, it would be raised and the process repeated until the ship reached its desired destination. These techniques were like an intricate game of leapfrog and could be used if you were going against the wind or current, if you had run aground, or if you were in dead calm. Excuse me, coming through. And this was accomplished by strategically placed lines and winches something that we are learning a lot about as we get better at docking. Of course, ships could also be towed by ships' boats or other sailing vessels and even horses if the channel was narrow enough. But these are all very mechanical, cumbersome examples of how these large ships could come and go. But there were even more inventive ways of getting ships in and out of these tricky spaces. During this period, ship camels were invented, which were essentially specially made floats that sat just along the waterline of sailing vessels. These being perhaps very early iterations of our modern cargo ship's use of water ballast. Just as today, when they weren't in use, the floats were full of water, but when a ship needed to get into shallow harbors, the floats could be pumped dry, raising the ship until it drew a fathom or so of water, or around six feet. Which is pretty remarkable considering our sailboat, our 33-foot sailboat, draws about four and a half feet of water. With these various techniques, as well as simply sailing in, the sailing vessel could maneuver into the harbor. Beep, beep. So now they had to make sure the ship stayed put while the crew went about their business. And for this, there were also options depending on the purpose of the visit. Just like today, protected mooring areas were available, where the ships could weigh anchor, or anchors, and then use ships' boats to come and go from the hubbub of the town and port. Alternatively, depending on the size of the dock and the ship, they could also tie up alongside the dock and use the breeze and tide to take them to and from. The complicated nature of the wind and current became so apparent to us when we had our own difficult docking. Because the wind was not in our favor, and even though we weren't using sails to take us in, the wind direction really controlled the whole situation. And now, we have to do it all over again. So now we really better understand the incredible skill it took and takes to dock using sails. 
Between handling the ship, the teamwork of the crew, the leadership of the captain, and the knowledge of the wind and current, docking during the Age of Sail was no easy feat. What is probably the most interesting thing about these options is that despite, and with the help of, our modern technology, many of these techniques are utilized today for ships of all sizes. We just have the luxury of engines, which, despite our recent troubles, really do make our lives a lot easier. And we know with a lot more practice, docking will become much less of a blood pressure raiser. But until then, we concentrate. Thanks for checking out this video! Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet! And if you want more history, head over to our website where you can find in-depth articles and sources!